Come on, Sersha, just this once. I'm telling you, Sophie, no Irish person younger than the granddad has ever said the phrase top of the morning to you with a straight face. Do not perpetuate the stereotype. I mean, if Jack Septica said it, he hasn't said that in his interest for years. Do not. Hi. If you ever play Postal 2 or care about this bit of weirdness, but in the part where the bank is, there's this billboard outside before a level transition tunnel. After the Steam release back in 2014, this billboard is advertising something called Ethan, Meteor Hunter, and you might have thought, judging by the art of it, that it was some Ori parody developer running with Scissors came up with, or a crappy Turok joke. That was my very thought as well, except it's a real game and it isn't an Ori clone. It's a platform, but not like that game. Plus, if it were a parody, it would have been a lot raunchier and pettier. But anyway, this is a 2014 puzzle platformer from French indie team Steven Studio. It was first released on the PS3 and PS4 on the same day, and later got ported to PC and other consoles like the Xbox One. This is the version I'll be looking at, released in July 1st, 2016. A great year, alright! Hardcore completionist gamers wanted, glad I'm not one of them. I tried to complete a game, but instead of giving me a beard, it gave me clinical depression. And I already felt depressed before that point. The game builds itself in its store page as a mix of Super Meat Boy and Braid. Oh yeah? Will there be a twist where Ethan was Well, let's find out. The story begins where Ethan's neighbor named... He's never given a name, is he? It is being a nuisance to him. But then a meteor shower of green crystals ran around the area, which grants Ethan the power to pause and move stuff around. That leads him to get them all or something. The game has three worlds to get through and a tutorial now to play, which I'll explain later. Let's start the first level and talk as I go. For graphics, it's okay. It tried to look cartoony and it did a good job, but it gotta look better. The characters look a bit classy to me. But with a game like this, and graphics as intensive as this, it was great at 60 FPS on my x one X. Audio is good, I quite like the clip when you get a shard. There's no dialogue except for the neighbors laughing, but I can't complain much. The music is nothing to write home about, the title screen and hope level track is alright, but it's no Mass Effect's main menu music. Everything else is good. The standard level music starts out subtle, but then the production ramps up by the end. I like it, it can get annoying when you're trying to get through a part for so long. So it's basically a platform where you jump and slide on the clients against speed, while also not dying from saw blades, steam, thrusters, hoeing bombs, and pools of acid, which looks more like frying on the sawmill levels to me. Movement isn't as free flow as any 2D platform of this era. You can jump with the A button, you can slide down on slopes by pressing down to get speed for longer jumps, you can push and pull some actions with the right trigger, and that's basically it. It feels fine, there's a bit of momentum when you sprint, but that's it. A better way to get it is again, to slide down. Air control is fine, not bad, and you can walk on wheels, so that's neat, I guess. Why did I expect this to be like Sonic? Anyway, this is a puzzle platform, so of course there's puzzles involving pushing, mousetraps, etc. Then you have the puzzles where you stop time and move the pieces around, making a path for Ethan to progress. Be careful, as you have a limited number of puzzles you've collected in the level, so be resourceful. So this is where the Braid influence comes from. I never played Braid in my life, and never will! So my closest comparison to this is Blinks the Time Sweeper. Remember Blinks? Because I sure as heck don't! In that game, you collect time crystals which can give you power-ups. That is, if you combine three of the same with one another. And one of the items you can get is the pause mechanic. Using it will, well, pause the game and accept the player. Also, you can't use it forever until you press play as is a timer, so use it wisely. In Ethan the Meteor Hunt, you collect the pause pieces and when you use them, there's no time to worry about. However, Ethan is also paused, but the cursor isn't, so you can move the blocks to the form path. 
The problem I have, and it's the only problem for these parts, is that moving is so sensitive. If I ever so nudge the stick, I still overshoot where I'm supposed to place. It is difficult to move one part to a tight spot, and it upsets me so. Well, they weren't kidding about this game being hard, it really is that hard! The name of the game is Trial and Error, and most of the time it's a lot of them. It's very challenging at least. There are bits where you have to switch platforms you're on, and levels where there's less danger and more brain teasing. That can take a long while if it's your first time playing. Until the 12th level of the entire game, and then you have to look up a walkthrough. And then I came across this part and I was stuffed. My bad. But what's not my fault is that each level has milestones for the quickest time, collecting all the shards, and busting the least times. I don't think you're supposed to do all three under power in one go, so the game has a little leeway. But the crap you have to get through the level with one of them under power, gosh! Getting all the shards seems the easiest, but oh boy, getting the least puzzles is gonna be a doozy. There's a level where you would build something to protect yourself from dumping bombs and humming ones, but as it's required under par, you must not build it and have to endure a crap ton of resets through trial and error just to get through the part. I hate this, but I don't need to do this. I don't enjoy it, but my sadistic viewers might like seeing me suffer, so here we go. Not only that, but there are some levels that have cheese you can get. And of course the French National Anthem plays when you collect it. At the very least, this game has infinite lives and checkpoints, and you have all the time in the world to finish it. And if you made a mistake, you can just kill yourself by holding B. But they're there for a reason, and that reason is to rip off Super Meat Boy, but not by much. Man, the jumping isn't as good, and you can't even wall jump. The levels don't always have puzzles, more like gimmicky levels. There are levels where it plays sort of like Doodle Jump, if I must go to the top with nothing but a pogo stick, and there are ones that are just shmups apparently, but most of them are puzzles, so I hope you enjoy that mess. And I finally managed to reach the boss level, where his neighbor tries to kill Ethan. I mean, what did Ethan do to deserve such disdain? The rest is all fine, but this one is a doozy. Here you have to launch the box with the crane three times to continue, and you have to clear the box's pad by stepping on the crumbling platforms and get to the mousetrap before they start reforming one by one. Also, there's a saw blade roaming around, and if you hit him, two will show up until he comes back. Like all levels, it takes a lot of trial and error, and after 20 minutes stuck here, all I had are errors. Sometimes my fault, sometimes the game's fault. Uh, why can't I just walk over the traps instead of jumping? It was over the timing. And don't get me started on the pause bits. The placement is always random every time you reset or after using it. And with that, plus the moving saw blade makes getting them annoying. Well, after failing to see the part many times and kept failing to launch the box in time, I finally managed to get to the next chapter. The underground mountain lab chapter, whatever. It involves electricity and metal conductors, which is a bad concept for a puzzle game. Just move the metals from the start to end to charge up and open doors. Of course, it's easier said than done, and I have more trouble with stuff unrelated to it, such as this part where I must get over the gap to get that shard, and the timing and movement has to be perfect, so I gotta blame my TV's input response. Nope, screw this. Ah, <sighs> sweet relief. Someone's gonna accuse me of being a hack for not finishing the game, but this is a quick review and they have more pressing matters to attend. Ethan Meteor Hunter is hard to recommend. If you're a puzzle fan, you might enjoy it if you don't mind the bullcrap race that tries to kill you. The difficulty isn't for everyone, I didn't get much fun out of this. But I still can't get over the fact that an FPS game that is super violent, more so in the Steam release, and, for lack of a better word, downright problematic, was advertising a rather inoffensive kids game, if you ignore the jibbing. It would be like Black Rifle Coffee sponsoring a toy channel. Overall, maybe get it when it's really cheap. Next time, Midlife Crisis, the video game!